one here that I'm working on. This is what the battery looks like. But this board right here ends up going bad. Um, happens pretty regular. This is one I've taken out. I'm going to work on it to replace the board there. Um, stay tuned for another video on that if you're interested on how to replace the BMS board. But there's tons of other videos out there on YouTube on how to replace those. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Victor. I hope you all are doing incredibly well today. Today I'm going to bring you a detailed video on how to convert a bird rental scooter, the M365 to be exact, from a rental scooter to a personal scooter. Functioning headlights, brakes work, even goes into eco mode. So it has all the functions of a regular scooter. <clears throat> All right, to get started, I have to say, um, if you are going to be converting one of these scooters to a personal scooter, make sure you have acquired this legally. Um, if you're trying to steal scooters off the street, you know, get out of this video right now. I'm not trying to here to help you out, but someone who has acquired one, um, there's lots of ways to get them. Maybe um, one of the vendors has pulled out of town. You can buy them at auctions, um, what have you, the way I come across a um, majority of mine here have been uh, storage units where people have got them and acquired them and ended up um, losing their storage units, unfortunately, and um, was lucky enough to be the, the winning bidder of the units and um, can have a little fun with them. So what we're going to do, I'm going to give you a, a quick tutorial and breakdown of how to convert these. Super easy. And um, let's get started. Let's set up our workspace here. You would think I'd have a better, better bench setup or whatnot to... To do some of this um, at any rate to get started on this we have a bird scooter here here we have the GPS at the top um, there is a battery in there as well and that helps the GPS emit the power it needs for the cell signal and everything else and such attached to it two wires run down through the neck one's your controller wire one is your brake wire goes to the main circuit board we can't see it, but it's here in this section. And there we have our battery at the end. Real simple setup. To get started, we're gonna have to open up the GPS there to remove that and get that out of the way. Easiest way to do this here is actually go from the bottom, but to start, let's pull these rubber panels off here on both sides. If you're having a little trouble get to them, you can also get like a Phillips head or something to um, to help you to pull that off of there. These are done. Throw those out. And we've got to flip our scooter over so we can see underneath there. I don't know how we can see that. There's actually six screws on the bottom side of the scooter. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we are gonna do is let's get those out of there. Only takes just a second. Now our lid should pull off. And let's get started. All this stuff, guys, this is no good. Rip it out. You don't need it. You don't need it. And find um, there's four Phillip head screws that we have to pull out of there as well to get the remainder out. I forgot to mention, the um, these six screws underneath, those are Phillips head as well, just substantially smaller Phillips head than the four right there. All right, so let's go ahead and just set this out of the way here. Now we see we have one, two, three smaller ones underneath there, a little bit larger one up there. Let's get those pulled out as well. Now these smaller three right here, you want to hold on to those. The rest of them you're going to have no need for. But let's hold on to those and I'm going to show you why in just a second when we get to that point. One, two, three is long. We don't need them here at the moment. We're going to hold on to them though because we will need them where the rest of them we can just throw away. Let's see if that did the trick there. It's coming loose. This here, we don't need this. I'm 
Let me get some snips. Might help. There's a um, zip tie in here holding this stuff together. Move that stuff there out of the way. We can pull this up and pull this out of the way. We don't need that connected anymore. We will need this, so don't damage that. We'll need that wire. Finish the snips, use caution in here. You don't want to cut a wire accidentally. All right, we got that much done. Let's get these disconnected. Use caution, don't want to damage these. This goes to your throttle, brake lever, and headlights. I'm going to keep those in good working condition as we do need those. All right, now we're going to pull this out. This is, uh, must be ground to the, to the base there inside the uh, metal of the handle. We don't need those. So let me find some pliers. This is the closest I could find. All right, all we're gonna do is reach in here, light may not hit it, and um, just pull these out of the way. We have no need for this. As of right now, it's in the way. There you are, that piece is done, and that is trash. No need for all that, it's actually an SD card inside there. Some of this stuff can actually be resold. And if you acquired it correctly, um, there, there's people, there's a market for these um, phone clips. So you can sell them, make a few bucks if you want to, find the right person who needs them. All right, we're gonna pull this out of the way. Sometimes this is attached to, to that, but we don't need this. And um, that much is done. Now, one thing I do wanna check next is our battery. Um, one thing that happens with a lot of these scooters sitting in storage and whatnot, um, not being used, the batteries um, themselves, I lost some light in there. <laughs> The batteries themselves, um, they don't go bad. I mean, these things will last forever, but there's a BMS board inside the battery that goes bad. Example of one here that I'm working on, this is what the battery looks like. But this board right here ends up going bad. Um, happens pretty regular. This is one I've taken out. I'm gonna work on it to replace the board there. Um, stay tuned for another video on that if you're interested on how to replace the BMS board. But there's tons of other videos out there on YouTube on how to replace those. What we're gonna do really quick before we put the new dash on is check to make sure this battery is working. When I find a lot, the batteries are not working. To know if the battery is working or not before we plug anything up and risk, risk shorting something out and taking the, the plate off to look at it. Let's just plug it up here. I have a battery charger already plugged in. And if this battery is a good battery, it'll just start charging, it'll turn It'll turn red, that's good, that's what we want to have happen, but a lot of times it'll end up start flashing green and red. And what that means is that we either have a, a shot battery, meaning the battery's no good, or the bad BMS board. All right, so I'm plugging it in. Let's see if we get any action here. And there is nothing happening on that, so no red or green it's likely going to be a bad bms board we will get to that in a minute stay tuned if you're curious as far as how to check the battery um, but the next step that you would do as long as the battery was good all you have to do is get you a aftermarket board you can find these boards online on amazon amazon you can get them around 30 dollars for a new board so what we have here is our dash cover, dash cover, and the new control board. This is a genuine control board. I mean, you can go as far as you can get the, the clone boards, and the clone boards are much cheaper. They're usually around $15 to $20. The difference, this board, you can modify it if you want to. It'll talk with the, uh, the um, regular Segway app or um, I'm sorry, the M365 app, whereas the clone board will not. However, there is one app that you can use for the clone board. It's the My Home app, spelled M-I-H-O-M-E. All right, so what we're gonna do with this here, this is our headlight. Let's plug that in. Let's 
and one of these is the brake and one of these goes to the actual motherboard in the base. And what I've known others to do is use that black piece that I tore off at the beginning. That's part of it, not all of it. But, um, you know, they'll put that back over it, guys. I have never once put one of those back on there. And these things, they don't fall apart. I mean, they stay together. All right, so your last thing here you would do is connect them. Make sure they line up. There's a marker there. You probably can't see it, but it's got an arrow pointing this way. And this has an arrow point that way. Line them up. It's only going to go one way. Then next you would go to turn it on. And of course we have no power it, because the battery is no good. I just discovered that. Um, I'm going to leave this open just in case I have to work on something. I won't know 100% how everything's working until I have a good circuit connection. But um, if you had a good operating board that you have and you knew the battery was good, all you have to do is the first step and you would be in business. You get that in place, use those first three screws that I pointed out, these here, one, two, three, you're gonna use those and um, it'll secure the board in place Then put the cover on top of there. One thing I will recommend as well though, whenever you're using these same screws, these screws here are, are way too long. What you're gonna do, you know, get them half length there. It'll save you a whole lot of time. That's, that's as, as long as it needs to be. This regular length because that that hole there is much smaller, the space, I'm sorry, the hole distance, the screw hole distance. That's all you need. You don't need them any longer than that. If you put the long one in there, it's not gonna go all the way in. You have to take them back out. All right, if that helped you guys, go ahead and like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, leave me a comment below of how this worked out for you. Um, if you've gotten this far and nothing has happened for you, you did everything like I told you, stand by, I'm gonna show you what happens next. We're gonna go underneath the scooter and check the next step as far as what we're gonna have to do to get it working. All right, now they have the scooter flipped on its side. There are 17 T10 head bits underneath your screws, not bits. We're gonna take all those out. A lot of times you'll find on these scooters, depending on which brand you have, a lot of these are all scraped up and worn out. And I find myself having to get a Dremel and cutting through them to put a slash in there so I can fit a Phillips head on there to, to get them out. It can get tricky. A lot of these scooters are abused. But what I found, these were in storage for over two years, so these birds happen to still look pretty brand new. Where this um, battery's messing up, um, you know, I don't know if it's because this age and it's sitting there and the battery got so low over time, it got so low that it couldn't hold the charge. I'm not sure. You know, I, I even hear that sometimes whenever bird knows that these things have been impounded or whatnot and they don't want to pay the money to get them out they'll abandon them and just send over um like updates for the scooters that will in turn you know kill the way things operate so that way it's not going to bit benefit someone else all right now that we have the cover off we can see our battery and our main circuit board here's our bms board if the BMS board was functioning good, we would see a blue flashing light there. But for craps and giggles, I'm gonna hit the reset button on there and uh, just see if that changes for us. I'm gonna use a Phillips head here to hit my reset. The reset is actually right there. I know you can't see it probably, but We'll use the Phillips head to push it down. It'll likely have a flashing red light probably three times. I'm pushing the button in. Let's see if we can see it flash. It's not doing anything. Oh, there we go. One, two, three, four. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four. So yeah, just a, a bad BMS board. You can hook the charger up to it. It's not gonna make a change. So there are four screws in there holding 
that in place. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out, disconnect the battery from the main circuit board, and there's a charging connection here. There's usually some sticky stuff on there that holds them together. Real easy to pull apart with your fingers, or you can trim that sticky stuff off. You don't have to, it just takes an extra five seconds of your time. Carefully unclip the battery connector battery lead to the main circuit board pop that out of there there we go but that battery is uh, it's no good the way it is so we have to replace the battery or do the circuit board but save time we're gonna put a new battery in there I wish I knew the size of this bit here um, I don't there's no readouts on the side here but um, that's what you need <laughs> On the back side of the battery, one thing you want to use caution here, there is this wire coming out of the battery, goes through this connector here and it plugs in to a little clip under here. And what that does is that provides the power to your brake light. So I would recommend using some pliers, needle nose to be exact, to go ahead and get that out of there. You're gonna use the needle nose to actually pull the clips on it and give it a small tug there to get it out. And there we have our, our battery. Here we have a new battery. And as you see here on the BMS board, we have a blue flashing light letting us know this is a good battery. This actually has, has a waterproof detection strip in there. Um, it's white. If these were to be submerged in water or water was to get inside here, um, that waterproof strip will turn red. Everything clips back in really easy. All right, we've got power back to the main circuit board. Light's still flashing blue. We're gonna be good there. You couldn't stand it up right now and check it if you wanted to, um, but I wanna get this screwed back in place. I got screws sitting up here. And what we will do, we'll go ahead and lean over, actually, and test the power button, see what happens. See if we have a good, good connection. There we are, that didn't happen the first time, so we're actually about 75% charged. So we can tap two times, Going to eco mode, there we are. Tap one time to get your headlights to come on. There we go. It's hard to see here, you have brake lights on, so if I turn the headlights off, brake light goes off too, I'm gonna hit the brakes, brake light flashes. All right, so we're in business there, so we're gonna go ahead and get this buttoned up, put all 17 T10 size screws back in there. If you, if you end up getting some of these and these are messed up and you have to drill them out, um, you, you know, just go to the local hardware store and buy some more. You usually find them in a Phillips head or whatnot. Um, but let's screw back in and we'll go back to the dash next. All right, here we are back up top. We're gonna need to tuck these down, then screw this in place. What I would recommend here is following your tube down and finding the gray wire here. And if you see, it's going to pull that wire into place. In doing that will also give you a lot more space inside there to tuck your wires. And these here, we can just tuck those, tuck those in, easy peasy. And you can screw these in with something very small, as a Phillips head screws. These are the ones that come on the scooter. I could use the drill, but what I'm afraid of is getting it going in there too fast and um, end up pressing on the circuit board and potentially damaging something. So I'm gonna do it by hand. All right, just in, in there snug. You don't have to go crazy tightening down. You're gonna end up 
risk and damage in the board. Now below here, as you see, now we've got two big pieces. Um, to keep them even, we can now feed it back inside the tube here so it has the excess up there. That way everything on your scooter looks symmetrical. Voila. All right, last step. We're trying to find our cover here. All right, here's your cover that will come with the kit. And sometimes when you buy these, it has a sticky piece attached to it already. This one did not. This is an original board. I try to uh, put the clones on there just to save a few dollars, but if you end up getting an original, it comes like this. This is your, your sticky pad here. Put that in place. We're looking good, everything's secure, brake pressure's good. So let's turn it on here and um, give it a little test ride. We didn't charge it anymore, so we're only about 75% battery. And these are rated for 50 to 220 pounds. And um, I'm right there at the top of the spectrum and it still does great carrying my weight around and uh, sometimes i even have my daughter on here with me and she's a solid 40 pounds so that puts it a little closer to 260 and it still carries <clears throat> the both of us around just fine about an adult on a scooter.